Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Shots fired on a playground. Police saying bullets hit teenagers and part of a home. We take a look at the case coming up. And a concerning rise in coronavirus cases in San Antonio. Two local hospitals joining the conversation. The frustrations being felt. But first. We're going to begin with breaking news tonight. We are now about five hours into the closure along the fine silver curve. This is a live picture of the scene tonight. That 18 wheeler rolling onto its side just after 515 this afternoon. Crews working for hours now to try and clear this mess up. It continues to impact traffic tonight near I-35 and I-10. Yeah, it's a problem we tend to see pretty regularly in this area when an 18 wheeler might be going too fast to be able to take that turn forcing the vehicle to tip over and block traffic just like it's doing tonight. There you see the crane actually lifting it up. I believe that is on tape from earlier. Fascinating to watch. It has been a mess for hours. Yeah, frustrated and fatigued. San Antonio health leaders say they're in the middle of yet another concerning rise in COVID-19 cases. One that could have been prevented. Nurses, doctors, those on the front lines of this pandemic, again, seeing more and more hospital beds filled with people battling the coronavirus. The positivity rate climbing to 13.5% this week. It was just over 3% at the beginning of the month. The night team's Patty Santos tells us 418 people in Bear County are hospitalized. More than 90% of those patients are unvaccinated. We are fully in the middle of, a, of another surge. A surge that started a few weeks ago brought on by the Delta variant and blamed on those shying away from the vaccine, say local health experts. Somewhere between 95 and 95, 97% of all of those patients have one thing in common. That's the fact that they are they did not get vaccinated. Of the 400 people hospitalized in Bear County, 70 are new from today. About 120 are in the ICU and 50 are on ventilators. It's a little late to ask for the vaccination when you're fixing to go on a ventilator. With the vaccines readily available and some about to expire because of the community's reluctance, there's frustration from those who've had the burden of caring for the sickest. I come to you from a place of frustration. I sat here 501 days ago talking about COVID, 71 weeks. Uh, it's been a long time. The steep rise doesn't seem to be slowing down. Dr. Paul Hancock giving us a glimpse into what Methodist Hospital is experiencing. We have uh, tripled our number of COVID positive patients in the hospital in just 14 days. Those who are not eligible for the vaccine, children under 12, need to be protected. Some have even ended up in the hospital after catching COVID. Experts say if more people don't get the shot, the virus will just keep coming back. Ultimately, the thing that's going to end this pandemic is people getting vaccinated. That's the bottom line. And according to the Texas Tribune, of the 9,000 COVID-19 deaths that have been reported in the state since February by the Department of State Health Services, only 43 of those were people who were vaccinated, the rest were not. And murals like you, the one you see right behind me here across the city are hoping to encourage more people to get vaccinated. If you want more information, head to ksat.com. Steve, Myra. Thank you, Patty. And there are still plenty of opportunities to get the vaccine if you're eligible. Tomorrow, three clinics will be taking place, one of them being at the airport's baggage claim in Terminal A from 9 in the morning till 8 at night. Another clinic will kick off at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning at the Mexican Consulate. That's at 127 Navarro Street. The Pfizer vaccine will be available from 9 a.m. till noon. The other clinic is at the Muslim Children Education and Civic Center from and that will take place from noon until 3 p.m. That's on 5281 Casabella. The Pfizer vaccine will also be available at this clinic. There are more opportunities available throughout the weekend and next week. We have the full list of vaccine clinics right now on KSAT.com. Now a reminder, those clinics are free and they're open to those eligible for the vaccine. They cannot mandate masks and they will not alert parents of a COVID-19 infection. That's the word from Northeast ISD in a letter from the superintendent to parents. The district says in addition to not allowing schools to require masks, the state will not allow schools to quarantine students and staff because of potential COVID exposure. 
NEISD will report COVID cases to Metro Health, and it will be up to them to contact anyone who might have also been exposed. School officials are asking parents to self-screen their children for any symptoms before sending them to school. New on the night beat, a teen boy beaten and taken against his will. Tonight, the man accused in the kidnapping case now indicted on a charge of aggravated kidnapping. 24-year-old James Barnett could face five to 99 years or life in prison if convicted. The case goes back to February 25th when Universal City Police said a 16-year-old boy sent a text message to his parents telling him he needed help. Barnett is accused of beating the teen in the laundry room at the Colony apartment complex on Kitty Hawk Road before then taking that teen to another apartment. That boy was able to get away. Barnett now awaits a hearing. The state resting its case two weeks after the murder trial of Otis McCain. Prosecutors calling more than 50 witnesses to the stand. In the last two weeks, we've heard from police officers, first responders and other people who just happened to be there the day San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi was killed in 2016. Today we heard from the man who gave McCain a mental health assessment after his arrest. Licensed social worker Elroy Brown testifying McCain understood the questions given and felt McCain was sincere. Brown says McCain expressed feeling like he was at a point of no return before expressing remorse for the shooting. He basically said that, you know, I mean, it wasn't about the gentleman that he, he had actually um, shot it was just about the uniform. He was trying to make a statement towards the uniform. In an interrogation video, McCain had been heard explaining frustration with the child custody battle and law enforcement. Brown says McCain did not indicate he knew Detective Marconi prior to the shooting. On Monday, it will be the defense's turn to make its case and call their witnesses to the stand. You can also follow the trial online at ksat.com. A city golf course under renovation dealing with quite a few setbacks, heavy rains, flooding and snow all this year. The night team's John Paul Barajas met with the president of the Alamo City Golf Trail to find out how the almost basin golf course is coming along and if it's impacting taxpayers. These gravel paths soaked grass and bald spots on the fairway will soon become the upgraded version of the almost basin golf course but the journey to get the job done has found its way into its share of weather related bunkers had we had optimal weather all winter and in spring and early summer up to this point uh, you would have seen those areas completely full with grass president of alamo city golf trail andrew peterson explains yeah. they started renovations in january to give the course a facelift about a month in we had an unprecedented february winter storm luckily for them no new grass had been laid down yet but crews still couldn't work then came floods in may and now a rare wet july we're always at the mercy of mother nature and mother nature is undefeated when we plant the sprigs if we get a heavy rain the next day or so afterwards it'll have a tendency to wash those sprigs away. So that's kind of the downside to what we've experienced with the floodings. Peterson says originally they hoped to have the course done around Labor Day. The new goal sometime in October. But are taxpayer dollars being swept away with the newly planted sprigs? That's the beautiful thing. So we're a part of the Alamo City Golf Trail Group, which has, for lack of a better term, a, a management agreement to operate the city of San Antonio's golf courses. All the uh, uh, operating proceeds that we've been able to uh, develop over the last number of years are paying for this project. Meaning the over $3 million project plus added expenses due to delays is costing taxpayers no additional money and is self-funded, according to Peterson. You need to be a golfer yourself. I don't know if you want me on this course, <laughs> man. <laughs> John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. The fire risk leading to another recall for General Motors as it enters the electric vehicle market. About 70,000 Chevy Bolt EVs under recall because of a risk that the battery will catch fire when it's parked. The recall covers bolts worldwide from 2017, 2018 and part of the 2019 model year. Nine fires nationwide were reported since 2020. GM is now working to replace any defective battery modules and possibly the whole battery pack. Right now, the company is asking owners to park the cars outdoors, limit charging to 90%, and to not deplete batteries below the 70-mile range. And out of those canceled contracts and the border wall, the Biden administration finalized the decision today to end two contracts in Texas. 
The contracts would have covered building a total of 31 miles of the border wall in the Laredo sector. Construction had not yet started on those projects. In a similar move last month, the White House returned $2 billion that had been taken from the military budget to build the border wall. President Joe Biden's 2022 budget does include $1 billion for border infrastructure, but that will be dedicated to technology, not constructing the wall. Much quieter, much quieter day today across the Alamo City and all of South and Central Texas, really. A lot of sunshine, dry conditions. Temperatures, though, were below average. We only topped out at 90 degrees. The average is 96. And right now, we're 83 at the airport in town. Stinson, 84, 83 Hondo. For the most part, low to mid 80s. Some upper 70s, of course, in the Hill Country. Kerrville, for example, at 79. Tomorrow morning, most of us in the mid 70s. We'll have a little bit of cloud cover to start the day as usual around here with that southeasterly breeze and then a lot of sunshine into the afternoon. Of course, you'll notice the humidity if you're headed to the bays, maybe doing some fishing. Expect a chop on Saturday because of the stronger southeasterly wind, but not as choppy as we get into Sunday. We're going to talk more about our next chance of rain, the Saharan dust, which is still here and how long it's going to last and even weekend temperatures coming up. See Thank you, Adam. Still ahead on the night beat, an ambulance stolen with a patient still on board. The suspect also making use of the emergency radio. We're going to listen to the message he sent out to dispatchers during a chase with Houston police coming up. And here at home, a fight ends in gunfire on a playground. The case now in the hands of San Antonio police. Next on the night beat. New tonight, a fight on the playground escalates to gunfire. It happened outside an apartment complex on South WW White Road, south of Sinclair Road. Police say two groups of teens were fighting when one group shot at the other. Two teens were shot, taken to the hospital. They're expected to be okay. Gunfire did hit one home. No one was injured inside. Still no arrests in the case. One man hijacking an ambulance with a patient inside. This happened in Houston when police say the suspect drove in front of that ambulance before then slamming on the brakes, forcing that ambulance to stop. An EMT forced out of the driver's seat at gunpoint before that suspect then took off in that ambulance. Police soon followed and part of that chase was all caught on camera. Investigators say another EMT was in the back of the ambulance with that patient. That suspect also pointed a gun at that EMT and even used the radio to talk to dispatchers. Can anybody hear me? I repeat, I'm the guy driving the ambulance. I'm trying to talk to the supervisor. Houston police were able to eventually take that suspect into custody, and only at point at points was he able to stand up on his own. Police believe he may have used some sort of drugs. The patient in the back of the ambulance was taken to the hospital and expected to be okay. Now to a scam alert. Imposters are already taking advantage of those child tax credit payments in hopes of getting your tax information, your personal information. Credits of up to $300 per child are already being sent to eligible families. The IRS says beware any communication offering to help you sign up for the credit or get it faster. The Better Business Bureau says criminals may also be posing as the IRS to get your information. You are almost a prime target for a scammer to say, we're going to trick them. We're going to trip them up and say, your credit's on the way, but we need more info for this next month. Click here. The IRS says it does not contact taxpayers by email, text, or social media to request information. They also don't ask for payment by gift card, wire, or cryptocurrency, and they don't leave threatening messages. Let's take a look outside with live cam this evening. 82 degrees out there right now. We're heading towards the weekend and of course wondering if we're going to see even more rain for the weekend. <laughs> you know that pattern has come to an end at least for now. We've had a big shift in our weather pattern, so we have a sunny and dry stretch on the way. And of course that includes the weekend, though, regardless of a lot of sunshine, just like today, temperatures aren't going to completely take off and uh, get out of control. I mean, we're looking at seasonable near average conditions for high temperatures, and that's with a lot of sunshine. And we've got an update on that Saharan dust. You may have noticed it today, especially at sunrise and sunset. Now that that rainy pattern of the week seems like we've had a lot of them over the past several weeks, which is fine. We're in good shape. As you can see here, it's just been tough going as uh, John Paul Braha showed us earlier today for folks that are trying to get projects done outside. However, aquifer is good. Drought situation, obviously non-existent since July 1st at the airport. 
uh, about four and a third inches of rainfall. That's two inches above average month to date. Since January 1st, nearly 22 inches of precipitation. Notice precipitation, not just rain, because that includes the liquid equivalent of the snow that we got in February, and that's just about four inches above average. So we're in good shape. And of course, since Monday, when we've had decent rainfall uh, scattered across South and Central Texas, some real pockets of heavy rain. These are the rainfall estimates. Northern Maverick County estimates on the order of about four inches, even parts of Bear County, uh, two to three inches estimated. And you look across the state, this is good maintenance rain maintaining our lack of drought. And here's another thing I like to see our neighbors in New Mexico and even Arizona getting some good moisture they need it. That's where we have the severe and really extensive drought still is in the desert southwest and parts of the Rockies and the western United States around Texas. Only 3% of the state in drought and that's this little corner in far west Texas and around Big Bend. And actually we've seen big improvements there as well lately. More rainfall. In the desert southwest, of course, it's monsoon season, so they typically see it. But even the rain that we had is pushing westward because of the upper level low, the main driving force of the rain yesterday. That's over New Mexico right now, so that's going to help out some locations over the four corners and the desert southwest in the days ahead. That's drifting away from us, and what's replacing it? Our old friend. Well, or foe, however you want to put it. Big Blue H, the upper level high, the heat dome that's settling in. This isn't a very big blue age. It's just enough to keep us sunny and dry. It's not going to be pressing on us very hard and really heating us up too much, but it has steered some Saharan dust our way. You may have noticed that extra haze in the sky today. That was the dust courtesy of the winds bringing it over from Africa. And there's an especially thicker chunk of it that's going to be closer to the Gulf coastline tomorrow morning and afternoon, and it's going to be enhanced a little bit even around town here. So particularly sunrises and sunsets, you'll notice the extra haze in the air on Saturday. Sensitive respiratory system, you might notice it. Sunday, it disperses and it's out of here. So today we only made it to 90 with the average high being 96, another day below average. You know, we've only had one day where the temperature in July, that is, has been above average, and that was July 3rd. 83 right now, dew point is 75, so it feels like 90. 81 in Define, 81 New Braunfels, Pleasanton 84. Still hanging on to 92 in Del Rio. Catula 87 in Kennedy at 80. Tomorrow morning, low to mid 70s, 71 in Kerrville and Rock Springs, 73 Carrizo Springs around San Antonio, mid 70s. By the afternoon, we're pushing triple digits in the typically warmer spots just west and southwest of town. Meanwhile, Timberwood Park about 94 in Lavernia, 95. Good pool weather this weekend. Nothing but sunshine, mid 90s, so near average. Bit of a breeze tomorrow, you'll notice at times. But if you ask me, that's kind of nice. <laughs> South southeasterly breeze at 10 to 20. Next week, a slight chance of showers comes back into the picture Wednesday and Thursday. But right now, I really want to stress a slight chance. And also notice Myra in particular. No <laughs> triple digits on the forecast yet. You know, I, I think I've asked about that once or twice. <laughs> a day, right? Yeah, I get that impression from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. All right, he's pretty good at dodging defenders today. He tried to dodge a question. How did he do? Let's check in with Greg Simmons, who is live in California. Greg. Yeah, and a very important question considering the level that he exhibits to the nation and to the Dallas Cowboys organization. When we come back, we're talking about Dak Prescott meeting with the media for the first time since reporting to training camp. And what he didn't say is speaking volumes tonight. And you'll get to meet one of the brand new Dallas Cowboys. Keanu Neal joins us coming up. It's a blessing uh, just to know where I was, uh, guess what, nine months or something like that ago uh, to where I am now. Nothing short of a miracle that Dak is back and ready for training camp. It's time to go camping with KSAT. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp here in Oxnard, California. What a special day. This is the first time we have heard from quarterback Dak Prescott since the players arrived on Tuesday. And there's no question it's a special moment for Prescott as well. All you have to do is look at what he did when he walked onto the field for the first time on Thursday. Starting quarterbacks do not make a significant appearance for the preseason games. But given the fact he didn't have a preseason last year and coming off his significant injury, Dak was asked if he wants to suit up in preseason games this year. 
I definitely want to play um, as far as giving you a number or, or a quantity of how much I need to. Um, I just want to get, obviously get back out there, get some reps before it's real, uh, just to have a live defense coming at you, coming at me. But it, what, what, what Dak didn't say when asked about his vaccination, that was what drew the attention today, especially after Commissioner Roger Goodell threatened forfeits for games and paychecks if there is a COVID outbreak among unvaccinated players. Uh, I think that's exactly important, Clarence. Uh, I think that's HIPAA. Um, but I understand where Zeke comes from. Um, I understand everybody's opinion. Um, and I think everybody uh, has that right. Now, Zeke had told us yesterday he had been vaccinated. As we continue our coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp here in California, we're joined by new Cowboys linebacker, Keanu Neal. Keanu, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Sorry about the long distance. We're in NFL protocol here. It's all good sometimes. Great to have you here. <laughs> you could have played for any team on the planet, perhaps. Why did you pick the Cowboys? First off, the, the organization is awesome. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, the Joneses do a great job taking care of the players and the reputation that they've built over the years. Um, you know, that's something I wanted to be a part of. And then on top of that, you know, Coach Quinn, uh, the connection I have with him, uh, it's, you know, I, I couldn't pass that up. He's a great, great guy, great coach, and uh, I'm excited to be here. And when you look at training camps in your past at Atlanta, how does this rank as far as camp? weather this is i mean this is nice this is really nice the weather's weather's awesome i mean it's sunny every day uh, so you can't beat it and you get a crowd to play in front of too How right about that? that that too you know with covid and everything i'm glad we got uh fans out here so they can they can enjoy it so that's that's definitely awesome kiana's a rather unusual name do you share on that with anybody we should know who's famous oh gosh <laughs> yeah so uh my brother actually uh, uh thought of the name uh, he was a big fan of Keanu Reeves. So, uh, you know, my mom was looking for a K and then he was like, oh, Keanu, because of, uh, you know, his, his uh, story, his background, right. everything he went through, the resilience and everything. Right. Uh, so, you know, he, he thought Keanu was a great name and my mom loved it. So that, here, here that's you are, right here. I am. Uh, are you a fan of any of his movies or anything like that? Yeah. John Wick is awesome. There you go. Yeah. All three of them. It's dope. Obviously, the biggest priority here is to rebuild the defense. Where do you think you can fit in on that? Um, just just bring in my my presence i mean i got a physical presence about me and uh you know that that's contagious so um you know bring, bringing that in the run game in the pass game um you know make, making offenses fear us so and part of that physicalness you're talking about is you played safety and linebacker which would you prefer are you happier at linebacker now i'm good either way you don't mind <laughs> you just I'm like good to either hit. way <laughs> yeah exactly you know i i love to to make my presence felt um but but yeah linebacker safety uh i'm i'm good either way all right good luck this season thanks hey, for being thank with you us. brother i appreciate it all right, tomorrow the official opening ceremony, expecting the standing room only crowd for the practice tomorrow afternoon. Kiana's nice enough to sign her camp board that will be used to help the Society of St. Vincent de Paul feed the working poor and homeless of Bear County. The Olympics officially underway next. Texas Longhorns, the Oklahoma Sooners' desire to be part of the SEC may be closer than you think. That's according to the Austin American Statesman today that says the Texas OU move to the SEC is almost done and it could come between official, I should say, in a week. According to a Big 12 source, they have been working on this for a minimum of six months and Texan leadership was not told about it. By the way, the regents for the board of Texas regents, Texas A&M regents is meeting on Monday. And tonight, how proud San Antonio the Spurs must be for Patty Mills, who became the first indigenous Australian Australian to carry his country flag in the 2020 Olympics opening ceremonies today. And we already had our first gold medal. That goes to China, followed by Russia with a silver and Switzerland with a bronze. Big day tomorrow. Official opening ceremonies should be packed. We'll have that for you coming up tomorrow. Hope you have a great weekend. Live from California, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, Greg, take care. <laughs> we'll be right back. That's it for the night beat. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts at 6 a.m. Have a good night.